If I said we were headed to a coastal town, most would immediately envision a place of crowded beaches, bustling souvenir shops, and hordes of flip-flopping tourists. And of course, those towns do exist, but then there are the towns in between, where the salt and the sea aren't just for tourists, but for the town's very existence. Laid-back villages that depend on the water, and where the history is as deep as the gulf itself. Making splashes in Palacious. Yes, that is how you say that. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. On the Texas coast, about halfway between Galveston and Corpus Christi, you'll find Palacios, just north of Matagorda Bay. It's a place full of salt, sun, and history. Welcome to Palacios. Not Palacios, like you might think, but the Texified Palacios, built right here on Trace Palacios Bay, which legend holds got its name when some shipwrecked Spaniards were swimming to shore and saw three palaces on the horizon, only to have them disappear as they got closer. Now, whether or not that's true, this bay is home to maybe the most famous French shipwreck of all time. You throw in all the hurricanes this place has endured, and it may seem like a really unlucky place to be, but trust me, if you want a day on the bay, this is exactly where you want to be. Today, Palacios has about 5,000 residents, including many families who've lived here for generations. They've endured booms, busts, and hurricane force gusts, but stay firmly rooted in the salty Texas soil. What is it about being next to the beach that makes people just paint stuff in pastels? Think about it this way, because of the weather, whatever color you paint in about five years, it's gonna turn pastel. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Okay, I like this downtown. It's kind of sleepy, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's relaxing, actually. There's no... <laughs> no, yeah. This John Mark just fell asleep. Uh, yeah, I'm like... I'm nodding off right now. <laughs> what? what? I'm sorry. You guys... What? As you can tell, downtown whispers of a time when Palacios wasn't so sleepy. And what better way to start the day than with a history lesson at the appropriately named City by the Sea Museum. Our historian for the day is Mark Moat. Let me show you some of the exhibits. So is this all set up, sort of a, a timeline of, of Palacios? Madagascar it is County? in a way, yes. So the story begins with the Karankawa Indians, a tribe who lived off the fruits of the sea from Galveston down to Corpus Christi. But the town's biggest population boom happened in the 1930s, when Palacios became a waterfront destination and the U.S. Army's Camp Hewlin went into full service. Uh, when the military was here, they trained 14,000 troops here. Wow. Uh, after uh, World War II started, the War Department took over and opened an anti-aircraft artillery range oh, and training wow. base. It's heavy, yeah, that's heavier than you expect it to be. Big bullet. No, yeah, very. Boom. Part of the reason they chose this area was because of the bay. They, they were able to fire artillery over the bay and not have to pick it all up. Okay. So the bay is still full of artillery. <laughs> Shrimpers find it all the time. Uh, really? Usually it's spent, so there's that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those 14,000 servicemen needed things to do, and downtown Palacios was happy to help. This is what we call our Old Town Palacios display. And uh, actually two of the businesses on here are still in, in operation. Uh, the Palacios Funeral Home and the Beacon. People are still dying in Palacios and, and they still, still need newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now I like this hat. Yes, we have a large collection of hats. From I got one just like it at home. Yeah. This one might be a little smaller. Just a bit. Although I need, and I need one like this. Oh, there you go. I'll wear this the rest of the episode. You'll, you'll fit <laughs> no, please no. Please no. <laughs> if you get transported to the 20s, you'd fit right. Yeah, in. I know. That's not bad. But maybe the most significant thing that happened in Palacios happened in 1684. Although we didn't find out about it for another 300 years. And I'm talking about the wreck of the LaBelle, 
a French ship that was part of LaSalle's doomed voyage that accidentally landed him in Matagorda Bay. And after it was discovered, archaeologists built a coffer dam around the sunken ship and discovered a treasure trove of history. We pulled up how many artifacts? 1.6 million. Well, about the 20% of the hole is intact. It's, it's sunk deep enough into the, to the mud and clay. Um, decay slowed down a lot. And so it preserved all those artifacts really well. Interesting. Um, it's part of the reason Labelle is considered one of the most important shipwrecks in this hemisphere. And uh, one of our exhibits that we don't house here in the museum is La Petite Belle. Uh, it's a half-sized replica of Labelle. It's a fully working vessel, and uh, we're going to take you out there and take a look at it. Yes! Let's go sailing. Great. <laughs> La Petite Belle, French for the Petite Belle. And today, I'm part of the crew of Captain Lane Hollister. Captain? Welcome aboard. Yeah, this is great. Well, hopefully you're talented at sailing, because I'm not. I don't want to meet the same fate as the first LaBelle. We'll get you out. OK, <laughs> you'll get me out. I want to come back in as well. Find a seat, and we'll get to it. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead, and let's, uh, let's tie this off to this. And it's pretty good. I think we're uh, seaworthy here. Captain Lane and his jolly crew not only built this ship, but have taken it all up and down the Texas coast. Man the rigging, boys. Yes. We sail at noon. Wait, no. We're already sailing at the turn of the tide. But something isn't right. Why is there blood on the deck? This isn't a ship. It's a vessel of murder. Oh, no, this is that red paint. But it looks like blood. LaSalle was eventually killed by his own crew, but so far, Captain Lane seems a worthy captain. So I'm amazed this is an actual sailboat, sailing ship rather. Square rig sailing vessel. Where exactly was the LaBelle found? It's about 20 miles straight out, as you're pointing. Okay. On the backside of uh, Matagorda Island. The excavation crews all stayed here in Palacios for the duration of the two year effort to recover the LaBelle. I tell you, the Gulf Coast can be a treacherous place. Head for that shore, my man, his head. Okay. <laughs> oh no. It was just a matter of time before I was responsible for sinking a ship. It's, it's here. We're going down. Something's gonna happen. Oh. That's good. Would you like to fire the cannons? Y'all have cannons? Yeah. yeah. Of course I wanna fire the cannons. Now we're really reliving the LaBelle's journey. If we be firing cannons in the bay, we have to do this in appropriate fashion. Arr! Fire in the hole! Arr! <laughs> <laughs> Seems me own cannons are declaring mutiny. Fire in the hole! Come on. <laughs> so I thought we'd be better at being pirates. We're not. Arr, one last shot. This time at Richie and Todd's ship. Fire in the hole! Arr! Right there, Arr! Go. Arr! there she blows. Your mother was a bat. Arr! Take that! And luckily, it looks like we're not going to meet the same fate as the original LaBelle crew. And we'll live to tell the tale of Le Petite Belle. The history is rich here in Palacios. The most famous building still standing is the Luther Hotel. Built in 1903, the Luther still accommodates weary travelers looking for a taste of historic hospitality. Hey, speaking of tasty hotels, for lunch, I've actually got another hotel in mind that's only 10 miles north in a small community of about 800 folks. Now, we all know it's a blessing to live in Texas, but nobody knows that more than the folks in the town of Blessing, Texas, who run the Blessing Hotel. Built on land that was once part of a ranch owned by famous cattleman Shanghai Pierce, this hotel is a legend. But perhaps even more famous than the rooms is the restaurant in the back and Miss Helen's Buffet. Full of home-cooked classics made with love and lots of butter, this buffet is a must-stop meal. Miss Helen Feldhausen has managed this restaurant for over 50 years and can take us all the way back to where it started. 
Jonathan Pierce founded Blessing in 1903. Okay. And the hotel was built in 1907. Him, his brother, I mean the whole Pierce family, Pierce uh -huh. Texas, Pierce Ranch, these are icons of Texas well, the lore. Well, the Pierce family opens up every morning for me. Pokey, I'm told. Oh, yeah, Pokey. Yeah, Pokey. This guy back over here, he's poking at a dessert right now. Uh -huh. That's pretty he, good. He, he, he always comes early and eats early. <laughs> Pokey now marks the fourth generation of Pierce's that have kept this restaurant open, even when the hotel itself had to close. So, what do you think this hotel means to the people of Blessing? Well, it is Blessing, the town of Blessing. If the hotel wasn't here, Blessing wouldn't be nothing. The restaurant part has never been closed. Wow! For the whole time of the hotel. And let's be honest, you know, Pierce family aside, I hear you're the, you're the real hero. Here, Miss well, Hellman. I don't know about that. <laughs> She's a humble hero. Hotel Blessing serves up an ever-rotating feast of Texas-sized proportions every day at lunch, except for Christmas. And Miss Helen knows how to cook. How many times are y'all gonna let me walk back through that buffet line? As many times. If you go away hungry, it's your fault. Okay, <laughs> deal. All right, you gotta have the game plan early to serve space, because we got a lot of food and it's all gotta go on this plate right here. Some greens, some pintos, chicken and dumplings. We're just gonna have to go here in the side. Sweet potatoes. We got big old chunks of steak, sausage. <laughs> this is so much food. There we go, baby. The creme de la creme, the crown of the plate. No, the crown of the crown. Homemade roll. Stay, stay. Oh. Let's go eat. How do you attack this thing? All right, I think we eat the chicken off the top, then attack the perimeter fried chicken. Oh man, crispy, juicy, salty. At some point, there's so much food on your plate, it just all kind of mixes together. That actually may make it more delicious. And you think about people gathering in this dining room 114 years ago to eat the home-cooked meal, that just makes the food taste all the better. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Ooh, well guys, it was a blessing to go to lunch with y'all. A blessing to my stomach. <laughs> You didn't say your blessings, though. I know, I did not say my blessings, but I figure in blessing, there's no need for blessing, because yeah. it's just superfluous. It's pre-blessed. Superfluous? Yeah. You don't know that word? No, I do. Oh, I Richie, just, I you'll hope, go to school someday. No, I hope the We're viewers, raising money, go fund me, I send Richie the, to high school. I hope the viewers at home are. They're, they're looking it up right now, actually. I sneak those in to educate Texas. There I'm trying go. to, it's what I do to help the community. Okay. All right, so while we're outside of Palacios, we're gonna wind through the countryside to the best place to see the actual beach itself at the nearby Matagorda Bay Nature Park. This 1,300 acre park managed by the Lower Colorado River Authority is an incredible mix of coast, wetlands, and prairie, but at a very important Texas spot. All right, so check this out. Here on the eastern edge of Matagorda Bay is where the mighty Colorado River crashes into the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, this river is the same one that runs right through the middle of downtown Austin. And actually, this pink granite that this jetty is built out of is the same stone that our state capitol building is built out of. That's pretty cool. But if I understand science correctly, it means on this side, yeah, salty. And on this side, fresh, salty, fresh. I do understand science. <laughs> Anytime I'm down on the beach, I gotta get my feet wet. All right, cool, look, check this out. Look what I found. It's a lightning whelk which is the official shell of the state of Texas. It's the only one of these spiral shells that opens to the left. And then, whoo, look in there. There's a hermit crab down in there. So, and since this shell is already claimed, 
I don't want to steal someone else's house. I think it's best that we leave him here on the beach. Go free, little buddy. Go be with your people. The visitor center is a great place for some hands-on education, but I figure we jump right into our outdoor classroom by stepping beyond the beach and making our way into the Matagorda Marsh. Man, this is super cool. I think most people who have gone kayaking are just used to kayaking rivers or kind of out in big open lakes. And this is totally different than either one of those because you got all this grass, this marshland. It's like a paddling in a spaghetti bowl. You know, you got no one direction you have to head. You kind of cruise around this way, that way, turn back. I mean, just make sure you got a compass or, a, you know, a GPS. The bay has a variety of paddling routes, all navigable by GPS coordinates. The best part is that they're untouched by motorized boats. So if tranquility is what you're after, then you're in the right place, amigo. Well, it's amazing out here as you hear the breeze, but then even louder, you can hear the crashing waves just over the dunes. You can't see them, but they're always there. It would be super easy to get lost out here. And just in case you do, here's some outdoor survival school. Check this out. This is called salt wart. Evidently it's edible and evidently Texans have been eating it dating all the way back to the Karankawa Indians. Let's see. It's crunchy and salty. There you go, man. Yeah. <laughs> salty. <laughs> salty, just a little bit of warty. Yeah, a little warty. Yeah. Did you bring any water for chance? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, I want some. I know, right? I think too often people come to the coast and they want to do the beach and only the beach. And they forget about these sort of huge wetlands and these bays that we have. I mean, they're really incredible. So next time you go coastal, make sure you appreciate every part of our coast, bay included. Now to head back to Palacios. Hey guys, look out here. This is the Texas shrimping industry right here. That's a lot of full size, like professional big shrimping boats. They call it the shrimp capital of Texas. I guess most of our shrimp is supplied by these boats right here. It's a jumbo shrimping industry in Palacios. Some boats go out for months at a time, while others go out every morning and come back with full nets of Gulf shrimp which they sell in local markets and restaurants, including places like The Point. Specializing in tasty Vietnamese cooking, but also beer, ice, bait, tackle, grocery, and lottery. The term general store doesn't even begin to describe this place. Explain a little bit about this place to me. What, what exactly is it? Is it a restaurant or a convenience store or a bait shop? We live in a small town, okay. so it had to be one-stop place. <laughs> so this is it. <laughs> this is Yen Tran, who with her husband Brian run this one-stop shop, serving up all the things a small fishing town needs, including warm smiles and hospitality. But of course, in Palacios, that also means shrimp. Right here, this is the shrimp wrap. This is like an egg roll, but but it had a whole shrimp, and we buy our shrimp from here. I'm gonna dive into one of these. I think it's cool enough. I got six of these, because I'm not sharing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh. I thought I had tried just about every type of fried shrimp in Texas, and you just proved me wrong. Okay. I've never had shrimp like this. This is delicious. Yeah. The menu has an incredible mix of Vietnamese classics that come from Yin and Brian's family heritage. Like many Vietnamese families along the Texas coast, they escaped Vietnam during the war and found a new home here under the Lone Star. Just one of the many things that keeps Texas so vibrantly diverse and delicious. So everything on the menu are my favorite food, so I will not get tired of it. You know, Palace has become like a, a place that you can meet the two cultures because you, know, you can get both Mexican and Vietnamese food. And of course, we do have hamburger. And oh. <laughs> Okay, of course, yeah, why not? You already mastered two cultures, just yeah. master American food too. Well, food is the universal language, so it's time to speak to my belly. I'm here on the Texas coast about to dive into a big bowl of boontick guy. I got the, the fresh sprouts, the carrots, cucumber, lettuce, 
and then a little, what is this? This isn't fish sauce. Because it doesn't taste like any other fish sauce I've ever had. It is. We make them here. This is the best fish sauce I've ever had. Thank you. Woo! I like that woman more and more every second. Oh, yeah. Like all the sauces, Yen has a special touch. Mm. Mm. That's the point. Oh. I'm pointing. We're at the point of point. <laughs> oh, point. Oh. Some of the best Vietnamese food I've ever had in my life. And I've been to Vietnam. I mean, Texas is a big old melting pot of cultures and a big old melting pot of flavors too. As long as you can get all of it in your mouth. Mm. Mm. All right, so being here at the point has given me an idea and a reason to stick around after dark in Palacios, cause I want to catch one of these fish and luckily, pulling in big ones is owner Brian's specialty. We're gonna go out uh, on the big pier, the lit one, Yeah. right across from the Luther Hotel. Okay, what are you looking for? Well, how about some of these fish like this one on the wall? Oh, okay. Like, how about that 40 pound black drum? That'd be pretty good. That'd be easy to catch. Pretty easy to catch, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. If I get some shrimp, go live bait tonight. Is that my best chance of catching a fish? Yeah, you can do that. My recommend is number one right now. It's okay. called a glass minnow. A couple of these, these are already have the hooks in them. You can use plastic, uh, so. yeah, soft plastic right here. They call it a supermodel. Okay. A Victoria's Secret. <laughs> right here, Nerdy Tequila. <laughs> Who is writing the names yeah, for these things? Yeah, I know things? it. Hey, it worked though. If it works, can't argue <laughs> with that. Hey, the names worked to catch me. Let's see if they work to catch fish. It is a full moon night. We're in one of the best fishing destinations in all of Texas. If uh, we don't catch fish, I think that's on us. It's kind of like at the Blessing Hotel today, they said if you leave hungry, that's on you. I think the same applies to fishing. Palacios has an amazing lit pier that's totally free to the public. Trippers have caught record-setting fish in this very spot. Oh, <laughs> yes! I oh, told y'all oh. we would catch a fish. Here it is, baby. I knew these waters were f just swimming with fish like this. It's a monster. <laughs> it's huge. What this is, is it? It's a catfish, man. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, check it out. That's a double catch. Oh, I lost the catfish. You need to send your big brother back this way, okay? These aren't catfish. These are like tiny kitten fish. <laughs> These little punk catfish. Listen, you hear him talking? He said, please, wow. sir. Don't let this be the end. Oh. <laughs> it's like, it's like the bay is taunting me. Well, at this rate, I won't be making the points wall anytime soon. But at least I brought some of the points Vietnamese coffee to keep me company. And take it from the wise, guys. When in Palacios, always pack an extra pocket on me. Mixes well with the sweet smell of shrimp on my fingers. There is a coast without the crowds, a place full of amazing people who've made their lives living at the water's edge, preserving history, soaking up the sun, and cooking up some of the best food in Texas. Now, I may not have caught the whopper fish I was looking for, but I did catch a whopping appreciation for the city by the sea. So from out here on the bay, I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. You know you're sitting with me here until we catch a fish, right, John Mark? How long is that gonna be? Doesn't matter. Days, weeks, years even. Oh, man. And I only brought one sandwich, so sorry about that. Come on. Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. 
or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy y'all, Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment, let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.